Forget the moon. Today, humanity is in a new space race, and the finish line is on Mars. But there's a problem, a big one, the sheer, mind-boggling distance. Right now, a trip to the red planet takes a grueling amount of time. Think about it. Anywhere from six to nine months trapped in a metal can, getting blasted by cosmic radiation. NASA's Perseverance rover took about seven months to get there. That's the reality staring down the first Martian astronauts. And a round trip? That's a massive two and a half year commitment. Because of the way the planets align, astronauts might spend over a year on Mars just waiting for the right time to fly home. The longer the journey, the bigger the risks. Radiation, the toll of zero G on the body, and the crushing psychological strain of being so far from home. So, the question on everyone's mind is, how do we go faster? What if we could chop that travel time in half, or even more? What is the absolute fastest way to get to Mars? We're gonna break down the top contenders in this interplanetary express race. We'll start with the chemical power giants of today, explore the game-changing promise of nuclear power, and even get into some wild sci-fi tech that could one day turn the solar system into our backyard. When you think of getting to Mars fast with today's tech, one name dominates the conversation. Starship. Developed by SpaceX, Starship is a fully reusable beast of a rocket designed to take people and cargo to Mars and beyond. It's aiming to be the most powerful launch vehicle ever built. As of late 2025, it's deep into its test flight program, having completed multiple high-altitude flights and pushing towards full operational missions. So, how does Starship plan to cut down the travel time? The answer is basically brute force and a really, really big gas tank. The traditional way to Mars is called a Hohmann transfer. It's the most fuel-efficient route, the scenic route, if you will, but it's also the slowest. To go faster, you need to hit the gas hard, burning more fuel for a bigger change in velocity, what rocket scientists call Delta V. This lets you take a more direct shot at the planet, this is where Starship's killer app comes in, orbital refueling. The plan is to launch the Mars-bound Starship into Earth orbit, then send up a series of tanker Starships to fill its tanks to the brim. We're talking about loading something in the ballpark of 1,200 metric tons of methane and liquid oxygen. With a full tank way up in orbit, Starship could perform one massive engine burn, pushing it onto a much faster path to Mars. Some independent models show that with this aggressive strategy, a starship could theoretically make the trip in as little as three to four months, cutting the conventional travel time in half. This is the aspirational goal that gets everyone so excited. But let's ground ourselves in reality for a second. These super fast trips are based on computer models, not demonstrated capability, and often assume perfect conditions. As of late 2025, the critical technology of transferring huge amounts of cryogenic fuel between two starships in orbit hasn't been done yet. Plus, Elon Musk's timelines are famously optimistic. His aspirational goals of uncrewed missions in the late 2020s, followed by crew in the early 2030s, remain highly speculative and depend on clearing some immense technical hurdles. Starship represents the absolute peak of what chemical rockets can do. It's an audacious machine. But to take the next great leap in speed, we have to look beyond combustion. We have to look to the atom. If a chemical rocket is a car engine, a nuclear rocket is a whole different animal. For decades, it's been the great hope for zipping around the solar system. And now, it's getting closer to reality. There are two main flavors we need to talk about, nuclear thermal and nuclear electric. Let's start with the one getting all the buzz, nuclear thermal propulsion, or NTP. Instead of burning fuel, an NTP system uses a compact nuclear reactor to heat up a propellant like liquid hydrogen to insane temperatures, thousands of degrees. This superheated gas then screams out of a nozzle at incredible speeds, generating thrust. It's way more efficient because the stuff coming out the back Hydrogen is much lighter than the exhaust from a chemical rocket. We measure this efficiency with something called specific impulse, or ISP. 
It's like miles per gallon for a rocket. The best chemical rockets top out around 450 seconds of ISP. A modern NTP engine is designed to hit 800 to 900 seconds, roughly double the gas mileage. What does that mean for a Mars trip? It's a total game changer. Studies suggest an NTP-powered ship could shrink the journey to just three to four and a half months. And that's not just about getting there sooner, it's a massive safety upgrade. Less time in space means less exposure to radiation, less muscle and bone loss, and a smaller chance of a critical failure far from home. This isn't just a theory. The basic concept was proven on the ground way back in the 60s with the NERVA program. More recently, companies like General Atomics have run tests for NASA, showing that modern nuclear fuels can handle the extreme heat required. This work led to a partnership between NASA and DARPA called the DRACO program, which is working to test an NTP engine in space, currently targeting a demonstration in 2027. But that's not the only way to go nuclear. There's another approach. Nuclear Electric Propulsion, or NEP. An NEP system uses a reactor to generate a ton of electricity. This electricity then powers super-efficient thrusters, like ion drives, which use electromagnetic fields to accelerate a gas like xenon. It's a gentle, constant push. NEP has very low thrust. You wouldn't use it to launch off a planet, but its efficiency is off the charts. It's the ultimate marathon runner. It just keeps pushing slowly but surely building up to incredible speeds. Current studies for concepts like NASA's deep space transport suggest multi-month transit times, which would be a huge advantage for hauling cargo and maybe, one day, for crewed missions in the 2030s and beyond. The race to Mars is pushing science and engineering to its absolute limits. If you're as excited about this stuff as we are and want to stay updated on the tech that will get us to other worlds, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. So, we've got powerful chemical rockets and fast nuclear fission rockets. But what's beyond that? If we're dreaming about the ultimate interplanetary express, we have to wade into science fiction territory. And at the top of that list is fusion. Nuclear fusion is the same trick the sun uses, smashing light atoms together to release truly epic amounts of energy. A fusion rocket would, in theory, create a propulsion system with both high thrust and insane efficiency, leaving everything else in the dust. Companies like Pulsar Fusion in the UK are actually working on this. Their vision includes testing a fusion engine in orbit in the late 2020s and creating drives that could propel ships at over 500,000 miles per hour. At those speeds, a trip to Mars could take weeks instead of months. The journey to Saturn could be cut from a decade down to just two years. Of course, the challenges are staggering. Containing plasma hotter than the core of the sun is a bit of an engineering nightmare. A working fusion rocket is likely still decades away, but it's a dream worth chasing. And even further out are more exotic ideas, like photonic propulsion. Imagine giant, powerful lasers on Earth or in space, pushing a spacecraft with a massive ultralight solar sail. Some studies suggest a tiny, gram-scale robotic probe could be pushed to Mars in just a few days this way. Scaling that up for a ship with people is a whole other story but it paints a picture of a future where zipping between planets could become routine. So, after all that, what really is the fastest way to get to Mars? In the very near future, our best bet is still the chemical rocket, perfected as SpaceX's Starship. Its fastest timelines are speculative and rely on unproven tech, like orbital refueling, but it's the only contender with real hardware being tested right now that could significantly shorten the trip. The technology that offers the most credible leap in performance, however, is nuclear thermal propulsion. The physics is solid, and the core ideas were demonstrated decades ago. The promise of NTP, cutting the Mars trip down to a more manageable 3 to 4.5 months, remains the benchmark for the next generation of human spaceflight. It hits that sweet spot of high thrust and high efficiency that's perfect for sending people to Mars quickly and safely. Beyond that, the future belongs to the dreamers. Nuclear electric propulsion offers amazing efficiency for hauling cargo, 
and fusion rockets, while still on the horizon, promise a future ripped from science fiction, where a trip to Mars might feel more like an old transatlantic sea voyage. Humanity is standing at a crossroads. The path to becoming a multi-planetary species is being built right now, not by one single invention, but by a whole portfolio of incredible ideas. From the fire of chemical rockets to the heart of the atom, we are finally creating the tools to cross that vast ocean of space and take our first steps on another world. Leave your opinion in the comments and share. Thank you and see you in the next video.